have in your Bibles or the Bibles that are in front of you in the pew. Turn, well, you can turn to Matthew, not Mark. We've been in Mark, and uh, I am going to just this, probably just this week, be in only Matthew. It's two verses. Last week, though in Mark, last week I had, I had said a little phrase, a thought process that spreading seed, remember we talked about the seed thrower and, and, and planting seeds and uh, a Paul, uh, Paul planted, Apollos watered, God grows. We talked all about that last week. We talked about how seed is thrown, how you should be the one who is presenting the gospel. You should be the one in your presentation. And I told you last week that it is all, your life is all about the presentation. And, and that would be either good or bad. You're still making a presentation. And, but I, I wanted to close last week, or I did close last week with, it is imperative that we have the presentation that is good, the presentation that is godly, the presentation that is of God, the presentation that comes from your conversation with God. I chose Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, but before I read those two verses, I, the fact is that they follow in Matthew, they follow what we call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. If I'm to emphasize, I'm going to stop there for a sec. To emphasize the two verses we're about to read. If we grasp that we want God, we want what is in heaven on earth. We want it on earth as it is in heaven. That's huge. Remember I say, highlight your Bible. Make it in bold. Because once you start to grasp that what God, who God is, who Jesus is his son, who the Holy Spirit that has been promised to us on a constant basis, with that, then you can grasp that it can be as in heaven on earth right now. And then Jesus, because Jesus is the one that was teaching this. Give us our food for today and forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Again, we're about to get close to those two verses, but right here in the prayer that they're asked, hey Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how we should pray. And Jesus says this right here. This is what he's saying. And the huge key, oh, they're all huge keys. Just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And now I'm at the two verses. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. I say it often, we live in one messed up world. These past couple of weeks, the world, as in the news media, and trust me, the news media is not the gospel, <laughs> okay? And, and neither is any of the news organization outlets. Here's what they all are. All of your tabloids, all of your news stations, they are selling you something. They are selling you what they want you to hear. They will edit every clip so that they can sell to you what they want to hear. Now, I'm not going to go in any kind of route like that because the scripture says forgive. And this is where we might live in a messed up world that is all over the place. If, but if you look at a lot of it and you're going bad, 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 bad. At least that's how I scroll because I'm on the internet. I read some of my news. Please, when I say any kind of papers or television stations or or Yahoo News, 
Like I said, it is not gospel. I do not condone it. I just read. And so I go, bad, 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 bad. Oh, wow, look at this one here. Here's uh, uh, the news are in a frenzy about, are you ready? Forgiveness, compassion, mercy, and love. Did you hear what I said? All of these organizations, and, and you can go down the list. So if, if any of these are your favorites, it's okay. I have this one thing, CNN, MS, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox News, not Fox News. You can list them all, uh, the, the Los Angeles, uh, the LA Times, read with a grain of salt. All of these were on a frenzy with compassion, love, forgiveness, mercy. I'm like, really? What is up with this? And it all stems, well, because then at the same time, where they're in a frenzy for that, you also have other that are in a frenzy still with hatred. Taking the exact same articles of love, forgiveness, and compassion, and trying to make a joke about it. And, and I, I watched a segment, I'm not gonna name the person, nor his show, so you know it's a guy. But none of his jokes were funny, none of them were relevant, they were just filled with hatred because someone had forgiveness, compassion, love, and mercy. And this is the world that we live in. We live in a world that if they, if they despise the scriptures, if they hate God, if they want to go and claim uh, separation of church and state, which there is no such thing, because if you're a Christian and you vote, guess what? You're now in the part of the, the, the state. That's, that's reality. Okay? And so with all of that, you have this where they're trying to sell the hatred right along with the love, compassion over here. Same article, hatred. And here's the thing. They, it's such a frenzy of a, of a messed up world that they hate themselves. Oh, now let me help you out here, because it's not just the messed up world that hates themselves, because you have churches that have church people hating each other. It does happen. Don't be alarmed by it. Don't be taken aback and shocked by it, because hatred is in the world, and hatred is in the hearts of people, and they begin to hate their own. And uh, sometimes, and it could be because of the... Uh, um, um, areas of, of where I, I work and how I work and the contacts I have, for some reason it seems like church people are almost worse than the world in just trying to bury each other. You're going, oh, you know what? You sin. You're going straight to hell. Wait, you go to church? And, and, and don't get me wrong, okay, but we just begin to, we, we destroy our own people just like the world. How, what am I saying here? Um, um, and I'm not a fan of hers. Ellen DeGeneres, right? I'm not a fan. I don't watch her show. And, and I, do not, I do not adhere to her beliefs. Okay? But last weekend, she sat next to George Bush and his wife, Laura. Ready? Not to go head to head about uh, uh, is gay life right or is gay life wrong? Not to do any of that. They went together for one purpose, and that was to watch the Cowboys play the Packers. That's it. Yet her own kind, the, the gay community, immediately began to put her down, to slam her, to call her out as not one of them. Because why? Because she sat next to a man who did not share her beliefs. And I did see a clip on her response. And her clip was this, in, in, in a nutshell. I say love each, she, I, she said this, I say love everyone. And when I say love everyone, I mean everyone. And this is where she has it right. See, God loves everyone. 
Once again, remember how I introduced all this. None of this is gospel except for the fact that God loves everyone. That is gospel. We just happen to have a, a gay woman who said, you know what? While all of you are condemning me, your own kind, I say love everyone. And don't just say it, but do it. And so, therefore, Ellen was able to sit. And may I say, because I always have to have a little funny thing for me. She, if, you, if you saw the article or read the article about uh, Ellen and her comments to the LBG community, she said this. Oh, by the way, I was secretly rooting for the Packers. <laughs> and I have Packer family friends, so family members, okay? Not immediate, but there's, I have. And so I, I read that, I go, Wow, here she is, and more than likely she is in the VIP section of the Cowboys, secretly hoping that the Packers will win, which they did. But the beauty of it is she stood by her firm belief of, you know what, he doesn't share my thoughts, he doesn't share my desires, but I can sit and talk and laugh with a man as we watch a sporting event that will never, ever change a life. And that is where the world should learn how to love. That you're who you are, uh, you know, because I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of people I do not agree with. But I need to learn to love them like God loves them. Why? Maybe I'll be able to sit and watch Bears game. I don't know. <laughs> I, I kid with that. But it's, I'm saddened that the world thinks that they can even beat up on their own with hatred. And, and we're going to come to a point of how can we think about changing that. There was also in this frenzy of, of compassion, love, forgiveness, and mercy. A year ago, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Lauren play the clip. and then um, So bear with me on this clip. Hopefully all, everything's turned up. Panic-filled scene in September of last year after former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger shot and killed an innocent man, Botham Jean, in his own apartment resulted in this sentence. Ten years imprisonment in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Geiger said she thought she had walked into her own apartment. CBN reporter Amber Strong reported on the tragedy and the response by Jean's church. I've interviewed his friends, his ministers, I talked to his teachers, I talked to his uh, employers and it was all a consistent message that Botham John was a servant that he was kind from the least to the greatest the 10-year sentence with the possibility of parole after five is far less than the 99 years in prison Geiger faced outside the courthouse the sentence sparked protests and intense confrontations but inside the courtroom Botham John's brother 18 year old Grant John showed tremendous forgiveness toward Geiger after the sentence was imposed. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. Again, I love you as a person. 
And I don't wish anything bad on you. Then an amazing show of grace that attorneys, court employees, and reporters said they'd never seen in all their years. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. After Brant Jean hugged the sobbing former officer, another remarkable show of love, State District Judge Tammy Kemp gave Geiger a Bible and directed her to read John 3.16 and even hugged her as well. The district attorney said Brant Jean's act was an amazing act of healing and forgiveness that should guide the community going forward. Man, I have poured over article after article. And so yes, I have seen the bad and I have seen good written and said, uh, you know, some of your Dr. Phil fans, they were on Dr. Phil immediately. And I'm going to tell you this, there was so much in that clip that is real forgiveness. I love you like anyone else. For a year, they have been with this pain of the loss of a brother, his older brother. The, the, the man's only 18 right there, talking about his older brother. I, and CBN did so well because one of the things they did is they dug deep. It's not just, because here's the world. This is going to be a flash in the pan, and this is the sadness of it. It'll be a flash in the pan. This is the world we live in also. And it'll be quickly forgotten. But they dug in deep that it's not just about a man killed. He was a servant. We, we find out who, who uh, Bolton was. And, and then, when, if you were to go, and you can, if you were to delve into this story in particular, you're going to find out who their family is. Their family have the godly Christian values. That is why they could, uh, that young man could forgive that woman. I love you like anyone else. In fact, one, you know what my, one of my favorite phrases was? I love you as a person. Here in the state of California, we are struggling. And in fact, actually nationwide, there's such a conversation of what to do with prisoners, what to do with prisons, what to do with convicted people. And, and so what's taking place is um, um, that I see in this video is we see a courtroom that sees people and not just laws written in a book or, 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 or lawyers that come up with their aff affidavits and depositions. We see where people see people. And so in order to have real forgiveness, the first thing you have to do is see people rather than actions. I love you as a person. Then he asked you know what? He asked him for a hug twice. And, and uh, there was a long pause by the judge. And, there's a, and one of the reasons is that never happens. You do not step down from a booth and go and hug a defendant. You don't go and talk to a defendant. You don't go and touch a defendant. And that's why there's this long pause of what's about to take place in her courtroom. In fact, that was one of the articles of the, the journalists. They're all flabbergasted, if I can use that word, because no one has seen that in their years. She has sat on the judge, has sat on the bench for five years, and, has, and I'm going to get into something else on, on her. But when you delve into that family, that family is all about following Christ. Now, I'm going to say this. Um, in a whole other segment, the mother talked about the things that took place with the entirety of it. See, that's one thing. Please never take anything. Don't be like the world and just take things out of context. Delve into, find out. And so we have a mother who... who, who uh, with pain in her heart, 
which is the opposite of hatred in her heart, spoke of the misdealings of the police force, the things that were, that were even brought out in the court, what was totally illegal and wrong, and in her words said, Dallas, you need to change. Justice needs to change. And, and so this is, this is where you go, wow, why would she? You know what? Because a woman that follows Christ knows that when you add faith, love, Passion, mercy, justice is also in there. It just is. That's who God is. But notice, it was not with hatred. I hate Dallas, because they don't live there. I hate Dallas. You took my son. It was not that. It was my son probably would still be living if we actually did things right. That's the pain of a mother. And rightfully so. And so... We need to start looking at people rather than the things that have been done. And this is hard. Like I tell you this all, it's easy to stand up there, Pastor, and say that. Yes, it is easy to stand up. Why? Because I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. But in my own part, it is hard to have someone come up and do stuff to you and you've got to forgive because they're a person that God loves. One of the things that you did not see in that video clip is the things that actually took place with the judge herself. First of all, the judge was immediately slammed for what she had done. I think I said this last week or in a, in a, uh, just in a gathering of talking. Um, the Freedom From Religion organization, just wanna, they want to sue her and get her off the bench. Can I say this? Just because it has the word freedom and the word religious means nothing godly. And if you're in a, any association, you know, I'm going to condemn a group. If you're in association with them, they are total opposite of God. They are hatred. They hate, they hate, they hate. They have no compassion in any bone of their body. I'm going to be brutal with it because that's what it is. And you have to call out organizations that are filled with hatred and ungodly. That's one of them. They immediately slammed on her because they saw nothing of the entirety of who this woman was that was the judge over this uh, proceeding. I don't know if I had it in that clip. What she did is not only did she pause and let a man come down and hug a lady and forgive her, with complete forgiveness. She came down after giving that. See, you want to talk about compassion? See, people, here's where people freak out. Oh, she took, a, he, he, they, she took a life. She needed the 99 years. Remember what I said? The judge looked at a person and did what everyone is screaming about now, which is compassion, mercy, teachable moments, direction. Because the woman did not get off scot-free. She got off with a conviction to serve time. And But what she did is after that sentencing, she came down and she hugged the entire family of, 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 of both of his family, which would be uh, Brant, his mom, his dad, and I think there was a, 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 a two other people that sat in that courtroom for this proceeding two weeks, and she went down and she hugged them. And then after she hugged them, then she went over and hugged the defendant. And she, with stuff you don't get, and stuff you will not get all the time, is the conversation that took place. And what happened with her, with the forgiveness that she showed to the woman, uh, 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 Miss Geiger, is uh, she said to her, Brant Jean has forgiven you. Now please forgive yourself so that you can live a productive life when you get out of prison. Then there was a, an exchange of uh, where they were all kind of like, wow, none of this has, has ever happened. And this is what, uh, in the five years that she's been on the bench, she's never had this asked her. But Mrs. Ge Miss Geiger asked the judge this, 
she asked if her life could have purpose. And the judge recalled and said, I know that it can. And Miss Geiger said this, I don't know where to start. I don't have a Bible. And that is when the judge went into her, her own personal chambers and got her Bible and gave it to her. She did not just hand the woman the Bible. She opened it up and together they read John 3.16. Then she hugged her. And then the judge, in her interviews, had this conversation. The previous Sunday, the pastor at my church had the parable of the lost sheep. And our pastor said this, if we are going to attract the one, we've got to show love and compassion. And then she thought about her job. God says, my job is to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. So how could I refuse that woman a hug? Forgiveness. Real forgiveness. Jesus. Jesus always, I told you last week or two weeks ago, Jesus always taught parables. And one of the parables that he taught was about the, the servant, this man, who uh, owed a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> and he went before a judge. And the judge forgave every dime, every penny, every mite of what that man owed. And in the parable, Jesus says the man went out of what was given to him, real forgiveness, and found the, another that owed him only a small thing. And he beat him, and he shook him, and demanded that be paid to him. Jesus concluded, well, then the story goes, they brought him back, and he, the man that owed a lot of money, still now owed a lot of money, and went to jail, I, I paraphrase him, for what he owed. Jesus closes out that parable. So also my heavenly Father will do every one, to you, every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. It's not a unique teaching of Jesus. It's a great teaching of Jesus because it's passed down. And then it's passed down. And it's passed down. Even Paul himself then began to teach on, on real forgiveness. In 1 Corinthians he says this, Have I not warned you before? Revilers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, but you were washed. And you were sanctified, which means set apart. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. What's a reviler? Somebody who hates and holds grudges and is unforgiving and bitter. People like that do not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because, and it's not because kindness earns heaven, but because kindness is the fruit of the Spirit given to those broken by the love of Jesus and embraced by the sweetness of being forgiveness, for being forgiven. Even though we were like that person, reviled against God, an enemy of God, a hater of the things of God, and God came in with His love and His forgiveness, forgave us, and we take that on to do to someone else. And uh, it's not just kindness that's the fruit of the Spirit. Look it up. I read, what destroys us is the settled position that we are not going to forgive. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
what destroys us is that settled position that we are not going to forgive and we have no intention to forgive and we intend to cherish the grudge and fondle the wrong that someone has done to us and feel that bitterness to some it feels good it feels good to go to bed with that wrath all night long knowing that you've been legitimately wronged. You're going to hold it against that person the rest of your life. If you say you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you love him and he loves you and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, Pastor Mark, I ask you to come forward. The one who said as he's ascending to heaven, guys, you're not alone. You'll never be alone. I promise you the Holy Spirit for everything of all of your life, including real forgiveness. And so to have that hatred, that unforgiveness that's destroying you can be changed because of the one who has forgiven you. The one who gives you the Holy Spirit. In fact, you can't have that and say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, but I hate your stinking guts. And what you did to me will never ever be forgiven. Those two things cannot go together. Something has to change. Either you follow him with everything, real forgiveness, which was given to you to give to someone else, or you stay destroyed with yourself with the hatred of unforgiveness. We're about to sing um, a closing song. Uh, Brother Bud, Brother Bud, he, he, he inspires me. <laughs> Sometimes he also freaks me out because, man, when the banks close, that means, oh, my check, it won't go through. Because <laughs> he's always coming up with birthdays and anniversaries, special days, and, and, and it's fall. And you know what? He goes, it's the first day of fall. I don't know about you guys, but you know what? Leaves started falling in my head. You know, the crispness of the air. Apple cider with caramel and all of the joy that comes with the things that he brings our way. Uh, last week, I believe it was last week, was Yom Kippur. And I'm saying that wrong. But there was a, a Jewish holiday. That Jewish holiday is, is one of their holiest days. It's a day of fasting, repentance, and worship. The services that they hold throughout the day include prayers, expressing regret and asking for forgiveness wow that sounds like it should be church that should they do it for portion of the pur the purpose is to be reconnected their thought process of really being reconnected with the father that's what forgiveness is. The judge showed compassion. And she took a risk in doing what she did. She had real forgiveness given to her. And she gave the path of forgiveness to someone else. And she gave a, a hope. See, that's the thing. Don't just read John 3.16. She gave a hope to that young lady that, you know what, you're only in your 30s or whatever, and so when you get out, and, and whatever the argument is of time, when you get out, that purpose does not change. That forgiveness is there for you with purpose, a godly purpose. And for us, Jesus Christ, he is the one that gave us the greatest forgiveness when he died on the cross for me, and he died on the cross for for you. For what? Just to shed some blood? No. But so that that would be this new covenant. That would be who we are with him. We are together with God. We are bonded with God. He is my father. His son is my savior. And he has gifted me with his Holy Spirit. His great forgiveness can be given to others. That forgiveness is this. Or excuse me, a, a thought process as we close. We are changed by Christ. 
we risk whatever we must to help others be changed by Christ. We're changed by Christ, and so we do everything to bring others to know Him. The second, you cannot bring someone to know Jesus Christ if you have not been changed by Him. They're just mere words that show nothing of life or forgiveness. Unless you are changed by him, by that, I mean, unless you are forgiven, God forgive me, I want you as my Lord and Savior, and I want your Holy Spirit to guide my steps so that when that thing comes up against me that demands my forgiveness, that my heart will be soft because of your Holy Spirit allowing me to give that forgiveness. Actually, not allowing your spirit is what walks my steps of forgiveness. Let us start forgiving others, really forgiving them by having compassion, mercy, love, which is all of forgiveness. Let us stand. Please, God, we, in these closing moments, if there is someone here that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, the simple, God, please forgive me. Forgive me of my, my unforgiveness of others, my hatred, my anger, my uh, the, whatever it is that just completely is nothing like you, God. I am created in your image. Who you are is who I am. God, wash me white as snow. Make me clean. Make me pure. Make me holy. God, forgive me. And help me in the forgiveness of others. Help me in the compassion to others. Help me with the mercy that is to be shown. God, help me because I cannot do it on my own. And in all the things of my life, may people see me when I fall and get picked back up by you. And may they see me in all that I do that is of you. Because it and that it all is for you, your glory. It is all for your honor. It is all for someone to know you and what you have done. In Jesus' name. Amen.